Hello, veterinary leaders. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the importance of delegating. You do not have to do absolutely everything. And for those of you who are struggling with time commitment and feeling yourself a little crispy around the edges, you're probably failing to delegate. So I'm gonna read you a little excerpt out of a little book you might know about, because this is an important area in this book. And there are basically seven red flags that are going to tell you whether or not you are not delegating. So let's review these. Red flag number one, that you are not doing well as a delegator. You say things like, I'm overwhelmed, I get sucked into too many meetings, or I'm drained by all the decisions that I have to make. Does that sound like you? Yeah, you might need to delegate. Red flag number two, your inability to unplug can only be measured by hours, not days nor weeks. Yeah, you're guilty. Mm -hmm. You have no idea when you last unplugged, okay? Red flag number three, you don't delegate a task because a portion of the process is complex or has exceptions. You are the only person who can handle the complexity of that task. That's it. You're the only one. There's no one else who can handle the complexity of that task. Um, sound like you? Yeah, you've got a problem with delegations. All right, red flag number four. You once tried to delegate a responsibility and it didn't go well, so you took the task back because no one else can handle this job. You literally tried it, it failed, so you gotta take it right back. All right, red flag number five. You find yourself stuck in decision-making bottleneck leading to inaction on many fronts. You can't make decisions because people want you to delegate, but unfortunately, you know they're gonna be wrong. All right, red flag number six. You aren't happy or fulfilled at work. Ding, ding, ding. That's a lot of you probably listening to this. Red flag number seven, you claim you have no time to delegate and you don't have any time to actually train someone. Does that sound like you? If you have said yes to any of these things, like, yeah, okay, I'm guilty of that, then you need to learn to delegate better. First off, recognition is the first key. You need to recognize that I need to delegate. Maybe I'm not giving my team or this particular individual the autonomy to actually perform their job to the best of their ability. Where I see this a lot is our technician managers and supervisors often complain that they're not given the autonomy to do their job to the best of their ability because they have a vulture looming over them known as practice manager. So you definitely want to make sure that you delegate what they're supposed to be doing and let them do it. Choose an item to let go. Fine, start with something small, okay? And listen, it's okay if it's not done perfectly. Did you provide that person the tools and resources and the expectation of how you would like it done? But choose one thing and let it go. Stop trying to micromanage that. Make sure you pick the right person. The reality is, is if you tried delegating in the past and it failed, you might not have chosen the right person. And that's kind of on you. So make sure you choose the right person and make sure you also provide clear instructions. Sometimes when we want something done our way, we just assume someone knows because they're inside our head. Eh, that's not actually how it works. And then when that person fails, we get on them like, oh, well, this is why I'm the only one who can possibly do it. You didn't give them clear instructions or set the expectation. You want to trust them, but you also do want to double check. Okay, yes. This probably falls on you. You're delegating work, but it's probably not their sole responsibility. It ends up falling on you. So just keep up and trust on that pro project, making sure you look at things, making sure that you're okay with things that are going on. Great example, you've given someone else the job of doing the schedule. <gasps> Gosh, I hope they don't fail me. Let's make sure we sit down and set the expectation and kind of how you currently do the schedule and then have them double check with you before they submit the schedule out to the entire team. Say, hey, when you're done for the next couple months, let's just go through the schedule together, make sure that everything's okay, make sure you don't have any questions. And then lastly, you wanna offer feedback. This is really important because a lot of times when you delegate something, if you don't provide any feedback, how's that person gonna know whether or not what they're doing is good or bad? So you definitely wanna provide feedback and say, hey, this was great, but, or hey, this is fantastic, thank you so much. 
it's still going to be a lot easier for you to delegate than doing it yourself. So you do need to trust and coach and develop out other individuals. Knowledge hoarding is not nice. So as a leader, learn to delegate. It's a positive thing. Yay. You can do it, people. Delegate. I trust that you can do it. And hopefully this gives you the tools and some resources to do that. Thank you so much for listening and keep on being a unicorn.